Good morning, dear devotees and friends. This our Sunday discourse on Yoga Vashishta. Let us begin with the beautiful sloka of the Yoga Vashishta. Dikaladi Anabachinna Ananta Chinmatra Murtae Swanubhuti Ekamanaya Nama Shantaya Tejasi. I salute the Supreme Brahman who is beyond all qualities, tranquil beyond the limitations of the directions, space, time, or objects, who alone is the embodiment of infinite consciousness and who is to be known only through the proof of one's own experience. So, when you begin a subject to study, the stotra that we, we chant, that gives the gist of that. What is our goal? Brahma Jnana. So, we are going with the torch of knowledge towards the Brahma Jnana. What do we mean by torch of knowledge? Because there are many different approaches to God and mainly we can say one is the karma uh, that is called the tantra. It is on the basis of the karma. Another is devotion that the rituals are there and emotion is there. And the third one is called Vedanta and that is the last knowledge. Veda and the Veda means knowledge unto the end, the last knowledge. What is that last knowledge? Brahma Satya Jagan Mitha Jiva Brahmaiva Na Apara I am quoting from Shankaracharya Jiva, this individual soul are nothing but the Brahman and not only this, each and everything is nothing but the Brahman and what is that? Consciousness each and everything having that consciousness and what is this name and form? This world is nothing but the name and form. Where from it came? And what is this? So, that exactly what we will be discussing. And here, our Yoga Vashishta, that book, the Rishi Vashishta, he is giving the a teaching to Sri Ramachandra. In the beginning, he said to Rama, you have decided to leave this fa family and your this world, but where are you are going? Everything is that same Brahman. Where you can go? That is the one. Then second he said, well, why we see difference? That exactly we will be discussing today. And in the Bhagavad Gita also it says, Shaknoti haivaya shodum prak sharira vimokshanat kama krodhud babam begam sayukta sansuki naraha. A Gita, the fifth chapter, twenty third verse. So, here why we are quoting the Bhagavad Gita? Because only three things are there kama krodha, this two, udbhavam begam. Kama krodhat bhavam begam from where? From the sharira of the mind. Kama is the desire. The moment the word you, you can find that in the Hindu scripture, Hindu scripture again and again this word is coming kama the desire, desire, desire. Desire is an is a we can say the mental attitude to grab something and what is that? Maybe name, fame, property, position, that we want. From from where? From this world. But what is this world? Illusory. So is it not very funny? There's something which is not there and we are hankering for that. Exactly that will be when the Bhagavad Gita, of course, it's said in a different because that is not for the highest level of uh, the students. The Vedantic students, they have already crossed all those. Now they are waiting for the ultimate knowledge. 
and the confusion is this universe, this world and the Brahman. How these two can exist, which is one is the knowledge that is the light, another is the ignorance that is the darkness. How these two can live together? It is not possible. Where there is light, there cannot be the darkness. Where there is darkness, that means there is no light. So, ignorance means the darkness. Ignorance about the original characteristics of the universe. So, that is exactly what he wanted to teach Sri Ramachandra. In our last class, we have already discussed about it and how it is possible. Then it says that Brahma Abhyasa then the last class we discussed this, I am just reminding. Brahma Abhyasa, the four steps are there. Then Tyaga Abhyasa, Dhyana Abhyasa and Sadhu Sangya. And the Sadhu Sangha is the beginning. Then step by step you are, we are going climbing up. Then the Sadhu Sangha means unless and until we listen again and again about the reality of this. A sadhu means holy and what is holiness? Holiness is the thought of God. The God is holy. Anything which is not connected with God unholy. So, God is the only holy and that is the way it says Sadhu Sangha means the holy company and what is that holiness? Constantly thinking about that God, the supreme, that Brahman and here it is not God even, it is the Brahman, the consciousness. You know how the practice? I am that supreme Brahman, I am that consciousness, I am not the body, mind, I am not nothing. Shankaracharya puts it very nicely in a very poetical way. Mano buddhi aham kara chittani naham. In that way he goes on telling. Last he says, Chidananda rupa shiboham shiboham. I am that auspiciousness. I am that purity. Mana, this mind. Buddhi, the intellect. Aham kara, the ego nothing of that. Then the whole description is there of this world and I do not belong to that. So, Sadhu Sangha will teach you. Now, we are discussing about Yoga Vashishta and those who are listening, your mind is on that particular subject. You are trying to understand what I am telling. My mind is also on that particular subject. I am trying to explain it as simple as possible. And as per my understanding, so both the giver and the receiver, the teacher and the taught, both we are on the same page thinking about the supreme reality. This moment our mind sometimes it is going here and there, but mostly we are concentrating. What is happening? We are to some extent for some time forgetting the world, the worldly things, forgetting what is going to happen and constantly thinking about the supreme consciousness. Oh, if I could achieve that, how it is possible? Sadhu Sangha, well, the, what is this Sadhu Sangha? How to achieve the Sadhu Sangha? How to get the benefit of the Sadhu Sangha? So, these are the way one should go on understanding. Friends, Sadhu Sangha, sometimes people they go for to a person and think that is the companion. That is good. The person is constantly thinking of God. But if there is anything negative, don't accept that. Don't take that. In this samsara, always there will be mixture of good and bad. Satte, Anirte, Mrituni, Kritte. In Sanskrit it says, the Satya, the truth, which is good, and the Anirta, the Mitya, that is mixed up and you have to take only the good one. When you go to the in the company of the sadhu, take the only good one. 
where you have to be careful. So that is the way the sadhu sangha. Then dhyana abhyasa. Sadhu sangha, I am going, listening, I am judging, and then I am accepting. Dhyana abhyasa, withdrawing my senses from the sense objects and trying to put my mind on only one point that is called dhyana abhyasa. What will happen for that? If I can control this tremendous energy that is called the mind, very, very powerful, if I can control that, then I will be the most powerful person in this whole world. As Lord Buddha said, the dhyana abhyasa, in one day it won't be possible. Just one time I was sitting for five hours, that won't also help. Abhyasa, regularly you have to practice. Tyaga abhyasa. Why tyaga? Tyaga means giving up. Now I purchase something, then I give it to somebody. So like that, like that. Why? Because the in this world, me and mine, that is the bondage. We constantly think this is which belongs to me, it belongs to me. Suppose somebody comes before you and says, or I like to give you this pain. And then when he was giving, just say, that I like to give the pain to you. And when he was giving, you also stretched your hand and touched the pain, but somehow it fell. And you will feel, oh my God, the pain. It is not your pain. You have not yet got it. But still then, the moment he said, I like to give it to you, and the possessiveness within you goes and start thinking that this pain belongs to me. Anything happen to that pain, if it breaks, and immediately you'll be very sorry for that. Oh, why it has happened like that? Why? Association. So, Tyaga means give away that association. They're just giving. I earn a lot of money. Now, that money I am giving away. Why? Now, I calculated it is not necessary for me. My children are well off now. Let this money go back to the society for the better cause. What I am going to do with this? If I don't give, if it will be lying in the bank, uh, something will happen. If my children is not knowing what is the bank account and how to do it, it will go to the again to the company, the bank. Why should I? Rather, let me give it for the good cause. And you feel joy into that. I am serving the people. And how? Your hard-earned money, you are sharing with someone. Your hard-earned things, you are sharing with someone. And your knowledge and your services, all that you are giving for somebody, that is called Tyaga Abhyasa. And what will happen? Your ego will go down, down, lessen, lessen, like that. And then finally, Brahma Abhyasa. This Brahma Abhyasa is possible when the ego has gone completely and at the same time almost gone. The completely means you are Brahman. So almost gone at the same time you are thinking that I am that consciousness. Constantly you are thinking because you don't have the desire. You don't have anything in your the, that I can, oh, I must grab it, I must have it, nothing like that. So, Brahma Abhyasa, that is the ultimate, that the highest. That's why Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said, when you are in the samsara, you are very much attached to the samsara, don't practice this. It is only possible for the sannyasis who have given up, the retired people, that for some days they are practicing Banaprasti life, and then they are going to the sannyasa life. The four stages, Brahmacharya, Garastha, Banaprastha, Sanyas. And in the Brahmacharya, you are having the good ideas, good company, and collecting all the wonderful information. And then afterwards, controlling your senses, then Dhyana Abhyasa, then Tyaga Abhyasa. After using your knowledge and capacity, you earn the wealth and everything. Now you keep those and thinking. Not just because it is full of, you know, sometimes some people they give the old clothes because they can't keep it. That's why they're not like that. 
you if you are having some other closets then you would have kept those not not like that just because i cannot keep it i give it no not like i can use it i can have this it is all new so i like to share it give it to others you know that is the reason when you are giving you should give something new sometimes some people they are eating something then they are satisfied oh we have eaten all acha now the pizza the half of it we have taken now the balance half acha give it to the swami ji <laughs> that should not be that is the way the sometimes people think that dana that tyaga has no meaning rather it will be having the opposite reaction pap the seen you can should not do that so when we are giving that's why shami vivekananda said the giver should kneel down he should be humble so that tyaga tyaga abhyasa you become humble 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 and then brahma abhyasa so this shaknoti haiva ya shodum prak sharira vimokshanat it says in this way the person can become happy we always receive the question how to control the anger now in gita again i will quote is the fifth chapter 26 verse he says kama krodha bijuktanam yatinam yatachetasam abhito brahma nirmanam vartate viditatmanam free from the last and anger kama and krodha why you are angry because you are having some desire because the desire was not satisfied so you are hungry angry you are angry because your unsatisfied desire so to control the anger many people they ask this question how to control the anger first go back to your mind and note down why i am angry the reason is this 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 sometimes some people criticizing you just look at them and think why maybe that they are talking in some other language i say i don't understand what they are speaking you know in andaman one person he was angry with us and he used to speak in telugu language and very abusively but we were not knowing telugu so we were very happy something he is telling and we still we were okay okay then one telugu boy came he knew the telugu language he said swami ji he is not appreciating he is abusing you at least don't translate don't translate i am very happy <laughs> with this so don't translate so if you don't know the language and whatever they are telling it is not affecting your mind same way whoever is praising or criticizing just take that in that way no krodha no anger will come that is the practice that is called sadhana and how to overcome the anger the moment you understand that something wrong is going to happen some people immediately take your mind inside like the tortoise the moment they will understand something wrong is going to happen immediately he will go inside that very hard shell that is talked to his way the sadhus also the holy people also take their mind back inside and will never react that is the way but sri ramakrishna said for the samsaris that you have to hiss otherwise people will go on and ha- harming you you should not harm them but you should show at least apparently that if needed i can harm you the so he sing not biting so that is the teaching of bhagavan sri ramakrishna so kama krodha bijukta naam yati naam yat chet sam that whose mind is under under the control yat chet sam how to control the moment there is a temptation moment there is something by which you will be disturbed withdraw your mind withdraw that mind and no not necessary it is not necessary and then discriminate all the temporary things is so by that way you are withdrawing they are free here brahma nirvanam 
अभी तो ब्रह्म निर्वाणम वर्तते विदितात्मनाम सो दिस वी आर स्टार्टिंग द अकॉर्डिंग टू द थ्री क्वालिटीज दिस थ्री थिंग्स आर हैपनिंग एंड स्लोली स्लोली वी विल एंटर इनटू द वंडरफुल टीचिंग ऑफ द वशिष्ठ मुनि बट व्हाट टाइप ऑफ थिंग्स हैपन अकॉर्डिंग टू द क्वालिटीज यू नो ऑल दीज बीइंग्स दैट वी सी is a made of three qualities one is good one is middle mixed and another is bad and nothing else somebody is bad so we are going against we don't like him somebody is good we are favoring him we want that he should be our leader why what is this good and bad only qualities that is the analysis of the ancient sages of india this is really very unique the human being apparently all same when you look at the person is all same when you go and behave with him then you understand oh my god there's so many differences so that is why the it is you know sometimes a young man and the young lady they come close they love each other then they marry after the long association then they are, think that they understood each other then they marry again after some time they break why because when they were meeting they were trying to show themselves as best as possible so they were using the raja and satya guna tamasik guna were hidden so none could understand of this both they didn't understand the tamasik guna of that person but after the marriage when they live together then they can understand oh my god this is so bad then they break so three gunas are there each and every person are having three gunas those who are having in the mostly the sattva guna that is good this that way he is a very good person what is the sattva guna this knowledge and love that is called sattva guna he is having the knowledge what is that knowledge oh i am hungry that person is also hungry in when at this moment i want some food that person also needs i want comfort that person also need comfort so the knowledge and the love understanding and then going out to help that is called sattva guna raja guna they understand it they go to help also but at the same time at the back of the tell they will they always want that you should recognize otherwise i am not going to help you satya guna will never do that they will go out of the way to help you because they love you but the raja guna people will help you if you are accepting him that as a gratefulness and all that you have to show again and again and tamaguna they do the completely opposite thing the moment they understand you need this thing they will do something exactly opposite so that you suffer and the suffering of the people gives them great joy that is the tamaguna so this tamasika people they are very lustful some hanker for name and fame that is rajaguna and the joy and helping others is a sattvaguna rishi vashishta was discussing about the existence and non existence of the samsara this world this samsara is very much existing for those who have desires this world is existing for them who are having the desires if it is not if there is no desire this world whether it is there or not it doesn't matter to you each and every one of us at one time one moment we can understand it doesn't matter to me whether i survive or not it is not affecting anyone here in this world then why unnecessarily i am thinking oh what will happen to him what will happen to her then i should do this i should do that why unnecessarily i am taking all the load on my head and no one cares for that it is not necessary 
So whatever is possible for me, I do, and then I withdraw myself. Each and every one, one point of time, we always think like that. Before my birth, this world was existing. After my death, this world will continue to exist. Then in between, I am leaving, and that is also small, as a very, very tiny little being, associated with very little small group. But why unnecessarily I am creating problem for myself and for others? Let me help. But no, Tamasika people will never do that. And they will not only suffer themselves, they will create problem for others too. The crea that is the problem with the Tamasikas. To some extent, Rajasikas. So we have to develop the Sattva Guna. And ultimately, from the Sattva Guna, we will understand this. This world is belonging to me because I want it. This world is not existing if I don't want it. And that is the position our Vashishta Muni is trying to tell the Sri Ramachandra. I will request you to remember that wonderful incident that happened in the life of Narendra Dutta. That was a young man of 16, 17 years. He was visiting Sri Ramakrishna and Sri Ramakrishna naturally he understood that is a very good soul. You know, sometimes after practicing long, practicing the spirituality, when a person comes before you, his uh, gesture, posture, physical, the language, you can understand. And also some, the mental waves, you can understand is a good man or a bad man. Sri Ramakrishna was the supreme God. Naturally, he knew who is what. When this young boy came, he was very happy seeing the purity in him. What is that purity again? No attraction for this, for this world. So that mind was pure. So he wanted to test him. Those who have gone through the life of Swami Vivekananda, you all know the Sri Ramakrishna only touched him. He had the tremendous capacity to transform the people just by looking at them or talking to them or by touching them, this power he was having. The moment he touched the Narendra, Narendra's mind started soaring high up and up. Sri Ramakrishna wanted to know his original, the, the place from where he has come. He was going up and up. But the boy who started shouting, Oh, what you have done to me? I am, my body is not there and then I am going somewhere. I have my mother, I have my father, I like to see them. What you have done to me is like that. When he was shouting, Sri Ramakrishna touched him back and said, well, well, that is okay, okay, you will come down. He became once again normal, that Narendra. But Sri Ramakrishna understood that he is meant for a great spiritual work that this Narendra became Swami Vivekananda. This, that is the purity, the complete purity. So sometimes some people, just because they are having the same name, many people they give this name and they think they are equal with Vivekananda. Oh my God, it's a great mistake. Vivekananda, you cannot imagine that the spirituality, the power that he was having, so friends, if you read the biography of Vivekananda, you will understand what is this Vivekananda. And samsara does not exist for them who are free from all desires. Now, Rishi said, this is the second chapter, third verse. Ayam hi sa bikalpa utta, sa bikalpa parikshayat, shiyate dabda samsara, Nisara iti asamshaya. He is telling that this samsara which arises, utta, utta means arises out of one's own mental modification. Swabikalpa. 
Friends, we are studying Vashishta, Yoga Vashishta. And this Yoga Vashishta here takes our mind on the supreme, the highest plane. And where there is no conception of God even. So that is only you are there and no one else. And who are you that the Guru is telling that don't be bewildered thinking that you are someone of this world. This world only is your mental projection. You thought like this and it has come like that. So that, from that point of view, we are discussing. Ayam hi sa bikalpa utta. Sa bikalpa means mental modification. And sa of that particular person. A person is thinking this world like this, it is becoming like this. <coughs> sa bikalpa parikshayat. And this sa bikalpa parikshayat, you have, that you have to is it burnt out because of non-existent when sab bikalpa parikshayat when the mental modification are destroyed the moment we think it is not there it is not there sometimes we each and every one we experience we are sitting and thinking and we are sitting somewhere some people are before me we are doing something or discussing something, but my thought took me somewhere else and I was completely over there, transported. I forgot that I am sitting over here. These people are sitting before me. They are looking at me. They are discussing this and I am supposed to respond in this way. I forgot completely. And my mind was somewhere else. How it is possible? I took my mind and then projected over there that these things are happening. I did. So when it is possible that proves I create my own world. When I want I can create like this. The children's imaginary world. They will see something and they will start imagining. The bird is flying and the child will think Oh, that bird is going to his nets and then it will feed the baby birds and they constantly they will thinking about and create the whole world. Similarly, sa bikalpa utta, because of the modification of the mind is utta. Sometime one thing, one person will see in a positive way Another person will see completely a different way. One Swami told that beautiful story. It was very early dawn, early morning. And one thief came out and that is the time most of the people they will sleep and with deep sleep. So that, that thief came out, he knew that this is the time people are sleeping. So I should go and do my operation. So he came, but suddenly he saw on the bank of the river, someone is sitting, covering his head. And immediately he thought, oh my God, I came to know that the new, the, the police officer who has come to this station, police station, is very active. And he wants to catch me. So he is waiting over there. Now today I should cancel, I should not go out. He went back to his room again. And that moment, a holy person came out and he wanted to go and bathe in the river so then so that he can start his meditation. He saw the same thing and he started thinking, Oh my God, look at that gentleman. I am now I am going to river for bathing. And he has already completed that and he's sitting over there meditating, covering his body with that the blanket. Same thing, two persons, they saw and they imagined two different, completely different things. And that is why sa bikalpa utta. The utta means it arises out of one's own mental modification. What is this world? 
my mental modification when i look at this people or that people according to my mental condition i think them in this way or that way but other people may think in a completely different way so that that is why the yoga vashishta is so perfect in describing friend try to understand this world about which you are so attached so concerned is nothing but your own creation so this own creation what happens vanishes shiyate as if burnt out dagda and become nisara become non existent when sab vikalp parikshayat when the mental modification are destroyed the so one thing we are thinking in a two different way all is sometimes and you know, that i was reading one the funny and uh, some in the paper it's come the horrible hanger or something like that i nowadays i didn't see that the gentleman he was uh, going over there to do something he was arrested his comic series a biking person he is very well built and very heavy he was arrested by his enemies and he was hanging and by his side his accomplice is also there his friend he was a, a lean and thin person then that person was telling this to, to this man the the hanger the hollywood hanger see we are hanging is this bad for me but good for you they said how come both are we are hanging the so what is bad to you and, and good to me because i am thin and they are not giving many food and going i am going to become thinner but think yourself in a positive way that you are going to lose your weight isn't it if they keep you for say 15 days in this condition you will lose your weight so that is the way they all is now one thing can be seen from two different angle the philosopher they always say they will give this example one glass is there half water one person will say half the water that is the half is empty but another will say half is full so the same thing many many times why we are giving these examples because it always happen to us but we don't take it seriously if we take all these things then we will understand it is my imagination everything good bad happiness misery everything my imagination we have to put this idea into our mind into our head i am creating my universe and if i am creating why not create a happy universe happy world happy family happy society let me think in that way but those who are trying to get the brahma gyana they will on the basis of this knowledge they will say oh my god why should i worry about this world because it is not existing at all so now this is the way shami dhireshanand ji uh, who has composed this book quoted acharya shankara to explain how one can be successful in spiritual pursuit and he is telling quoting from the bibeka churamani verse 276 anatma basana jalai sthiro hita atma basana nitya atma nishthaya tesham nashe bhati swayam sphuta desire to realize the atman moves backward because of the cravings for the worldly objects anatma basana jali jali means the net big we are bound by the net of desire what type of desire anatma what is anatma inner things or it is not existing at all so that is the anatma basana jali 
I need a house, I need this, I need that, going on thinking, craving, craving, craving. And those like us who have grown up, if we go on writing the diary, each and every time we will understand that up to five years, our, our vasanas were different. From five to fifteen or teenage, this was different. Then it changed, all the desires changed. Then after the retirement, now different type of thoughts are coming. My same mind is thinking, the same object becoming different to me. That means that object is not real. If the object is real, it will never ever change. It will never change. As because the object that I see is not permanent. This point, if we understand, we will understand the what the Vashishta was teaching to Sri Ramachandra. First he said, where you are going? This world is nothing but the, that Brahman, manifestation of the same thing. Second he said, but don't accept it as a real, because Brahman is only the real thing. And how to understand that this is not real? Because it changes. And how I will know? And my, we all can understand this. When we were children, the, these objects, they came to us in a different way. And then in the teenage, another way. Then in the youth, another way. Then in the old age, completely another way. The same objects, changing, changing, changing. That means that object is not true. I am creating, I am thinking, the when I am thinking, oh, this is really wonderful, I think it is wonderful. Then after some time, I think, oh, this is all bad, then it becomes bad. In the samsara, we have seen so many letters we receive, phone calls we receive, the parents are complaining against the children. and. But for the children, they were thinking, husband is complaining against the wife, wife against the husband. Why this? At one point of time, we were, I was thinking, oh, it's a beautiful, and I must have her as my wife. Who thought it? I thought. And then afterwards, what happened? Now, I am thinking, I should get rid of the her because it's so much trouble. Who is thinking? I am thinking. So, this proves that the object I am actually creating. So, that is exactly, he said, ayam hi sa bikalpa utta, sa bikalpa parikshayat, shiyate dabda samsaro nissara iti asamsaya. There is no doubt you can change it, my friend. No, no, no doubt at all. Asamsaya. Samsaya means doubt. Asam, no samsaya. We will understand it. Only little discrimination. Only little bichara. And that will help us to understand it. It will shiyate. It will vanish completely. Dagda. It will be burnt as if. And then it will completely nishara become non-existent. And you will be free from these. What is that? Jala. Shankaracharya is saying, these desires for the objects are the main problem. So, we have to go beyond that. Rishi Vashishta then expl explained how to dissolve the samsara. This phenomena by knowledge. And the Pedantin, he is alone. His guru only gave him that knowledge and idea. That's all. Now he has to fight his own fight. And there is no one to help. 
So the scripture and the guru only giving him the idea. But he has to understand that and he has to remove all these bondages. The, here he says, Parigyanina sarpatyam chitra sarpasya nashyati yatha tathaiva samsara sthita eva upashamyati. A snake was painted and it was so realistic, the painting. The people were afraid to see that. They thought it must be the original snake. Very, very terrible. In a few days before, I was reading in the newspaper the, some of the, from somewhere, one young boy, he was having a painted uh, on his t-shirt a snake, terrible looking snake. So the aircraft officers, they told, please change your t-shirt because other people are afraid. You have to cover that. Put on another shirt on that then only we will allow you to travel in our aircraft. Truly, it, it was there in the newspaper, the picture, a terrible picture of a snake. And suppose the boy is sitting exactly at the back, someone is sitting or looking at him, constantly looking at that picture, the terrified picture. But uh, that is a picture. So, parigyanena sarpattam chitra sarpasya nashyati. Long back. This our at the time of Sri Ramachandra, his guru, this Vashishta is telling, even if uh, the snake is drawn over there, the people are afraid. The painted snake also can make some people terrified. To remove the fear, one has to disclose about the painting. Yatha tathiba samsara sthita eva upashamyati. Similarly, all dualities of this world can be removed with the knowledge of Brahman. Parigyanena, right knowledge. Chitra sarpasya, the picture of the snake. Sarpatyam nashyati, fear of the snake is destroyed. Parigyanena, so, oh, don't be afraid, this is only a picture. Okay, I am covering that picture. I look at it, I am touching it. Don't be afraid, it's not real. So, parigyanena, through the knowledge, the fear of that snake, it will go away. Similarly, tata, like that, tathiva samsara sthita eva, like that the world as if existing, the samsara as if existing, upon upashamyati, become extinct, the Guru will come and will say, the samsara is not here. And immediately that person will understand, it is not here. In the Vivek Churamani, he says that those who are truly, they want to go beyond this duality, they want to be free, they want to get the Brahma Jnana, the self-knowledge, how they feel about the samsara, as if the burning forest, Durbara samsara dhabagni taptam, dodhu omanam vatai. I have seen that some people, uh, they behave in such a way to attract the opposite, uh, the sexist people. Why? Because they think this is very wonderful. They think the joy, the happiness is there. So their peculiar behavior, looking, eh? <laughs> sometimes we observe. And then we feel, look at that man. He is not understanding the real thing. But anyway, that is that another problem. Those who are truly understanding what they should do, understand this much. That this is not true. And how it is not true? There are two types of existences. It says, Babuharika existence and Paramarthika existence. Apparent existence, Babuharika means apparent existence. Paramarthika existence, that empirical existence. 
Sometimes if you go to a coffee shop and ask for a cappuccino, and sometimes they make on the coffee a beautiful the moon the, with the coffee only. On the cover of the, that milk and over that they will make this beautiful moon or a smile face or something, maybe a little butterfly. It looks so good. And when they give, you feel, oh, let it be there. I should not drink the coffee, let it be there. But after some time, slowly, slowly, it will melt, it will go. So that is called Bhavaharika Avastha. That is only apparent existence, only that for that time, particular time it will exist. It is not permanent. The world is also the same. Friends, we do not know when we will die, but we know that someday we are going to die, isn't it? So we were born someday and then they told this is your happy birthday and they, we always remember the birthday, but birthday is going on increasing. And it was the one first birthday, second birthday, third birthday, it goes on increasing. And then the time will come, it will stop and I am dead. What happens to this world? Nothing. A little bit of some people, great uh, the scientists, they have discovered something. The human society will remember then. The great heroes, their names will be there in the history and they will read like that. But that, don't take that seriously because that is also changing. Everything is changing. As a spiritual the person, an aspirant, we should take this, that this is also temporary, everything is temporary. And from this point, we should start our journey. If this is temporary, there must be something permanent. Otherwise, how can I understand that this is temporary? A person who has not seen ever the ocean will never be able to understand ocean. When I, we were in Cherapunji, it is a hilly place, those tribal children, students, they never saw the ocean. So one day when we were showing them a picture, a big ocean and the beautiful, the ship is sailing on that, in their own language they were telling, it is not, it is not, it is not means beautiful. That was the first time they saw the ocean. They have not seen the big water body also. So naturally for them, water means they are coming down from the top of the mountain. They collect the water from there, that's all. But that is a huge, huge ocean, so much of water. They never could imagine. So that is sometimes something we don't understand, we don't know because we have not seen. The same way there must be something that otherwise how we are comparing this. The, if this the compare we can do, what is that permanent one? Paramarthika, empirical, real existence. Then the rishis will say it is Brahman. It is the consciousness. If this world is permanent, then why it is changing? That is the argument. If this world is changing, that means it is not real. Another famous Vedantic treatise, Panchadashi, the second chapter, 70th verse also says, the appearance of an object which is in fact non-existent is an illusion, mitya, just as an elephant in dream just as an elephant in dream. This is Mitya. It says, Bhati ti chet bhatu nama bhushanam mai kasya tat yad sad bhasamanam tat mitya sapna gajadibat gaja means elephant. Mitya is a un, it is not true, false, swapna, dream, Gajadibat. As we see in the dream, the elephant, the same way we see this world, everything is mitya. 
as we do not accept the elephant in the dream after awakening as real similarly after attaining the brahma jnana this world also become illusion that's why bhagavan sri ramakrishna once remarked if i knew this world as permanent i would have covered the whole village where i was born with gold so this is very very temporary nothing remains all the time changing and friends we are spending life after life for this the some people will appreciate me i have learned some songs i must sing and so the people should i can write one or two poems or some story people should appreciate it what for but we are millions and millions of people they are only for that a little appreciation acceptance by others nothing wrong in it but try to understand is it really worth this is temporary very very temporary we do not know a time was there maybe long back at the time before long before jesus there was a hero there was a very powerful person there was a poet there was a beautiful lady there was the, the, where are those all that is there we see sometimes mentioned in the history and sometimes imaginary stories everything has gone the cleopatra has also gone all the kings have also gone so those who are sincere trying to go beyond this must stick to the knowledge and what is that knowledge this world is my creation yat sat bhasamanam tat mithya sapna gajadibat nothing wrong enjoying the ill this illusion then it says this what shall i do then enjoy this world as long as you think that this body is yours be in that you need not to go and commit suicide be there but as we enjoy the magic show the same way we have to enjoy the, this world this world is illusory but it is there it is only vyavaharika existence is apparent existence like the magic show let us enjoy this but inside we know this is very much apparent seeing the magic show we never go and run to grab that i want that i want that do we do that no at least the grown up people will never do that because they know it is the magic show similarly grow up grow up in spiritual life and then this you say that this world is my creation i am thinking and i am creating this world let me create a very wonderful world and live into that that's all but that is not the actual thing so friends let us con- conclude over here in sanskrit there is a word called artha buddhi this is a terminology artha buddhi means this is a thinking unreal as real and from there all the misery starts when the lord buddha says the this whole world is full of misery from where it starts artha buddhi what is the artha buddhi thinking the unreal as real if we can overcome that understanding that i am creating this whole universe then i am completely free i don't need anyone to help me only my understanding thank you very much the first question is from opratim Op- is asking we are ignorant of our real nature but if the jiva is also a manifestation of brahman then where does this ignorance lie because reality is one and non dual uh, uh, can you read it once again yeah so, so he is asking we are ignorant of our real nature but if the jiva is also a manifestation of brahman mm. then where does 
कि दिस इग्नोरेंस ट्रूली लाइफ बिकॉज रियलिटी इज वन एंड नॉन डूअर दिस ट्रू इन द विवेक चुरावनी दे आर आस्किंग दिस क्वेश्चन अगेन द शिष्य इज आस्किंग दिस क्वेश्चन टू द टीचर दो वेर दिस इग्नोरेंस लाई द दिस इज एक्चुअली कंप्लीटली ए मिथ्या इट्स अ माया nothing is there there is nothing but i am thinking how they say it is as if in the dream you think that you are suffering and your friend is a king so many things what does it lie nowhere just imagining reality is as you are the friend if you read the vivek churamani there are eight questions that was asked by the disciple to his teacher from there you will get the wonderful answer thank you the next question is from tania guha she is asking how can one reduce body consciousness uh, this is a practical question very good question the how to reduce the body consciousness the if constantly we are thinking that i don't belong to this body this body is a mass a bones and all in reality i am just attached to this body for some days how to reduce that is the the in the they have prescribed almost in all uh, philosophy and in religion that one should fast one should walk so many miles to reach to the temple one should do these one should so that this physical physical this uh, comfort they should go and slowly we can forget but you need not to do that just go on thinking if you are a devotee think that the god is within your heart and if you are following the path of knowledge constantly you think i am supreme brahman and i don't have any other association that is called brahma abhyasa So as I was telling, the eight four steps that first is sadhu, and then you have to tyaga abhyasa, dhyana abhyasa, and brahma abhyasa. By that we can forget the body consciousness. The next question is from Sima Vishwas. She is asking how rajo and tamo guna go away from a person. The practice, practice and understanding. The rajo guna. is nothing wrong is good but as bhagavan sri ramakrishna very nicely said that turn the it is a force that turn that force towards god what i am everybody has realized god so many people have realized god and why i cannot i will also surely realize god so that is the raja way a tama way to reach god so turn all those things towards god if you are angry become angry with god so that is the way we can overcome and from the vedantic point of view you have to do the discrimination vichara and then you can overcome and that is in the advaita vedanta you don't have the god to go and lay your head at his feet you don't have any one to pray you have to stand on your own feet and say I don't belong to this that is the only way thank you thank you friends let us now say shanti three times and then we conclude om shanti 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 hi हरि ओ तत्सत्मकर्पणमस्तु